1944, the Second World War, the whole world is fighting. In 1941, Japan entered the war on the British and Soviet side against the Axis. After Pearl Harbor, the USA entered the war on the Axis side. Now, the USA, Germany, and Italy and their allies are fighting against the British Empire, the Soviets, and Japan. After four years, Great Britain is under siege. The Axis is preparing Operation Sea Overlord, the invasion of Britain. In Russia, the front line has stabilized from Narva to the Azov Sea, far from Moscow and Stalingrad. This is one of the bloodiest fronts, with gigantic tank battles, heavy artillery barrages, tens of divisions on the move, and few prisoners. In the Pacific, Japan is losing ground. September 1944, American Marines land on the Palau Islands. The Japanese attempt again for the decisive battle by utilizing their last remaining strength at Leyte, but they suffer another defeat, losing four carriers, three battleships, and ten cruisers. However, after the victory in China, Japan is far from defeat. But a game changer is arriving. December the 16th, 1944, Almogordo, New Mexico. The U.S. conducts the first test of a nuclear weapon, months before then in our timeline, thanks to the collaboration of German scientists. The USA has two nukes ready for three enemies. It is too dangerous to drop the bomb in Japan. The bombing campaign started only some months before. Following German requests, the bombs will be dropped over Russia. January the 4th, 1945, a modified B-29 takes off from Norway and drops the little boy on Leningrad. January the 7th, another bomb on Smolensk. The two bombings kill more than 300,000 people. Stalin is not particularly scared from this new weapon and orders unrestricted sarin usage. The fight in the east becomes even more bitter. Operation Overlord, the invasion of Britain, is set for the 26th of March, 1945. Nearly 120,000 troops using 4,000 vessels will cross the British Channel. It will be the largest amphibious military operation in history. Before the landings, 1,000 bombers will drop 5,000 tons of bombs on British defenses. The P-51 Mustang fighters are now protecting American bombers. Atomic bombs will probably be used as well. At the time, the secondary effects of the nukes were not well known. The Axis commits 40 divisions to the Battle of England, 19 German, 16 American, 3 French, and 2 Italian, totaling around 1 million troops. General Dwight D. Eisenhower is appointed commander of the Expeditionary Force, and Rommel is named as the commander of all the land forces involved in the invasion. The first wave of the landing will consist of 11 infantry divisions. Two infantry divisions on New Romney Beach, codenamed Omaha, assigned to the Americans. Two infantry divisions supported by three battalions of tanks on Rye Beach, codenamed Utah, assigned to American and French. Two infantry divisions on Bexhill Beach, codenamed Schwert, assigned to the Germans. Three infantry divisions on Cuckmere Haven Beach, codenamed Juno, and assigned to the Germans and Italians. The American 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions and the German Brandenburg Regiment will land in Kent, north of Hythe, to seize the aerodrome at Limpne and to capture Folkestone. The second wave of eight panzer and motorized infantry divisions will arrive after some hours. A third wave is formed of six further infantry divisions. The Strait of Dover will be blocked at both ends by mines. In the months leading up to the invasion, the Axis conduct a misinformation campaign to lead the British into expecting an attack on Anglia. However, the landing will never happen. In Great Britain, the situation has become untenable. The combined American-German Navy caused the UK to be almost entirely blockaded. The US Navy is now larger than every other Navy in the world, combined. 6,780 ships, including 28 aircraft carriers, 23 battleships, 70 escort carriers, 72 cruisers, over 230 submarines, 380 destroyers. Bombers continue to hit England, especially London. The empire is lost. 
India is in open revolt. Canada and Egypt are invaded. In the Middle East, there is disorder. South Africa is isolated. Australia is far away. London, January the 28th, 1945. Churchill resigns. Then the UK accepts the generous peace conditions offered by the USA and surrenders. The king can remain. No reparations will be paid. There will be no loss of the fleet. Colonies will be free to follow the path they decide. The war in Western Europe is over. The peace conditions are really mild. The German leaders don't hide their position. Mussolini says it's more an armistice than a surrender. But at the end, they have to accept the decisions of their powerful partner. There are reasons for these light peace conditions. First of all, the decision of the British to preserve the Royal Navy made a landing very dangerous, with the risk of disaster and the obvious risk of high casualties. It would be difficult to explain this to American public opinion, since most of them were not fully convinced of the necessity of a war with the British. The RAF is still larger than what the Luftwaffe was in the West. In 1944, the UK stopped producing bombers and focused more on fighters. But the main reason is that a defeated and invaded Britain would leave the whole of Europe to the Axis, and the United States of America needs a strong UK to be turned into an ally after the war. However, Hitler was never interested in a war with Britain. And at the price for peace with Britain, Hitler earns free hands in the East. The Eastern Front had few operations after Kursk. The Soviets restarted their slow advance, but with no major operations. The Soviet Union still has the strongest land army in the world. They produce twice the artillery of Germany and the United States of America combined. The same number of heavy tanks as US and Germany combined, more machine guns, more everything that is on the ground, literally. But their situation is worsening day by day. Hundreds of civilians die from starvation and diseases every day. In the Russian skies, the Axis has predominance. From the Turkish oil fields, the U.S. 9th Bomber Command bombs the Baku oil fields. 80% of the Soviet oil comes from the Caucasus. B-29s strike at the heavy industry in Siberia. The Soviets have difficulties intercepting these high-altitude aircraft. The Germans never had this type of bomber, and air combat over the Eastern Front was generally at lower altitudes, so the Soviets never had the need for high-altitude fighters. They have the very limited MiG-3, and in early 1944 they finished the trials of the I-211, armed with two 20mm cannon. However, the damages from the bombings are limited. A strategic bombing could flatten a city, but it's ineffective for hitting an industry hidden somewhere in Siberia, and the crews of the B-29s that are shot down rarely survive. With Britain out of the war, all Axis forces in Europe move to the Eastern Front, so there are around 1 million extra troops available compared to our timeline. U.S. forces are starting to be deployed in Turkey, and the 10th U.S. Mountain Division is in Finland. The Finnish army is now able to cut off Murmansk. March 1945, the Soviet Central Front takes Kharkov, but at a high price. In the south, von Kleist launches an assault on Rostov, but the Soviets hold the line, again with high losses. The Red Army has already lost millions of men. April the 11th, 1945, Stalin is killed. A time bomb hidden in a suitcase detonates during a speech in Moscow. A military junta, led by Zhukov, Konyev, Rokozovsky, and Khrushchev, seizes power and immediately starts the negotiations for an armistice. Japan is under heavy bombing by air and sea. The American submarines blockade Japan. Few raw materials arrive from Indonesia and China, where a bloody guerrilla war cost Japan too many resources. The Japanese increase their use of kamikazes, but they cannot stop the American advance. January the 9th, Americans land on Luzon and Corregidor Island. The 19th, U.S. Marines invade Iwo Jima and Palawan. The Battle of Okinawa, the bloodiest battle fought in the Pacific, takes place during this time. July 1945, MacArthur announces that the Philippines have been taken. The Japanese Empire is cut in half. August 1945, the USA has another three nukes ready. This time, it's Japan's turn. B-29 bombers from Tinian drop atomic bombs on Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and Kitakyushu, killing around 300,000 people. One of the peace conditions imposed on the Soviets is that they have to declare war on Japan 90 days after their armistice, the time they needed to shift the required number of troops from the European front to the Pacific. August the 9th, exactly on schedule, 90 days after the war ended in Europe, the Soviets enter the war. 
A battle-hearted one million strong Soviet force wipes out the Japanese Kwantung army in Manchuria in three weeks. That's why in our timeline the Japanese always avoided disturbing the Soviets. August the 15th, Emperor Hirohito issues a radio broadcast announcing the surrender of Japan. The Second World War is over. The conflict caused 75 million deaths, half of them in Russia and China. August the 17th, 1945. The Potsdam Conference begins under Hitler, Mussolini, Pétain, and Truman. Roosevelt died in April. The goals of the conference is the establishment of a post-war order and spheres of influence. Spain obtains Gibraltar. Finland retakes the territories lost during the Winter War with the Soviet Union and some lands in Karelia. Romania obtains Moldova and Odessa, but loses part of Transylvania to Hungary and Dobruja to Bulgaria. The Netherlands maintain their colonies, at least for a few years. Bulgaria retakes the lands lost after World War I and Macedonia. Italy gains Montenegro, part of Dalmazia, and the British Somaliland. Yugoslavia is split between Serbia and Croatia. Canada. Despite part of the American establishment asking for annexation, Canada remains independent with a Puerto Rico-like confederal status and a military occupation for some years. France. Alsace becomes a free zone, as was Danzig. France is divided into two occupation zones until 1947, but they maintain their colonies. The Germans leave Scandinavia, Belgium, and the Netherlands, but the USA has to accept the German annexation of Luxembourg, and Germany is free to build its empire in the east, as the Soviets did in our timeline. The lands Germany lost after World War I are returned to Germany. The Baltic states, Poland, Belarusia, and Ukraine are all German puppet states. Other eastern countries are also under German influence. Japan loses all their possessions in Asia, as in our timeline. Korea is not split in half. After the war, Britain is almost the only destination for the Marshall Plan and rises rapidly, but they lose the empire. India becomes independent right after the war, soon followed by all the other colonies. The Chinese Civil War ends with a complete communist victory. There will be no Taiwan. In the Soviet Union, Khrushchev becomes the first secretary of the Communist Party. In the French elections of 1948, in which no Communist Party is allowed, Pétain wins the elections by a few votes. France remains a part of the Axis. In Norway, Quisling remains head of a pro-German government. Rudolf Hess is handed over to the Germans. He is executed in 1947. The killing of the Jews happens the same as in our timeline, but in rather low numbers. And with Germany being on the winning side, it will be almost forgotten, as happened to all of Stalin's massacres of the Ukrainians, Baltic peoples, and political opposition as in our timeline. Around a million Jewish refugees enter Israel during and after the war. The Germans are happy to let them go. In 1940, they even thought of relocating all of the Jewish population to Madagascar. A cold war between the Axis and the USA soon begins. The United States creates the NATO military alliance in 1949 in response to the Axis alliance. Both sides and the Soviet Union have the atomic bomb. There are various regional conflicts. Vietnam, the Chinese Civil War, the Cuban crisis, fights in India between Hindus and Muslims, a civil war in North Korea, Arab-Israeli conflicts, revolts in the Italian, French, and Dutch colonies, and discontent in the German-dominated eastern countries. The world will not be a boring place in the coming decades. Since France is on the German side, perhaps the Vietnam War will be fought by the Germans, so it would probably be shorter. Perhaps the first man on the moon will be a German. Germany was far ahead in missile and jet technology. Who will win the Cold War? Or will we have a World War III soon? Will it be a nuclear war? Or will there be a final clash between Germany and the Soviets? I don't know. This story ends here.